வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் விஸ்கோ எலாஸ்டிசிட்டி தட் இஸ் பயாலஜிக்கல் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் எக்ஸிபிட்டிங் போத் விஸ்கஸ் அண்ட் எலாஸ்டிக் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸ் இந்த லாஸ்ட் வீடியோ வி லுக்ட் அட் ஒன் மாடல் ஆஃப் விஸ்கோ எலாஸ்டிசிட்டி விச் இஸ் த மேக்ஸ்வல் மாடல் ஆஃப் விஸ்கோ எலாஸ்டிசிட்டி in this video we'll continue our discussion on viscoelasticity which is our time dependent deviation in elastic behavior that is time or strain rate dependent changes in elastic behavior in biological materials or most biological materials are viscoelastic so it makes sense for us to understand how viscoelasticity works in this video we will be looking at another model of viscoelasticity and this model is called as white model and as we did with the maxwell model we will be looking at creep and stress relaxation functions for the white model this is the white model this is a dash part in parallel with the spring okay in the maxwell model what we had was a dash part in series with the spring here you have a dash part in parallel with the spring which means that there will be qualitative difference in the response of this model when compared with the maxwell model that makes sense but we do not know what exactly that is uh, in other words uh, we have not yet done the mathematical formulation of this which we will do but just by examination of this model i am looking at this model and i immediately know that the response is going to be qualitatively different how because previously the force felt by the two elements in the maxwell model was the same but the deformations were different and uh, we summed the deformation to a total deformation and then we modeled the whole thing as a function of the deformation and then we converted it into forces and uh, with appropriate initial conditions and so on remember that is what we did but in the white model the force that will be felt by the two elements will be the same but the deformations will not be the same okay something to keep in mind so immediately it becomes obvious that uh, that the difference will be qualitative so i can i can immediately think that there will be some difference okay so this is the white model in which uh, the dash part is in parallel with the spring remember in the maxwell model we had the dash part and the spring in series with each other so the results and the response to applied stress or strain or the applied force or deformation will be different between the maxwell model and the white model why because uh, because of the way in which i have formulated because of the model itself because uh, in the previous case in the maxwell model these two were in series now they are in parallel so obviously there will be some behavioral difference between the two okay the forces the when when i when when you pull this uh, uh, model on on two sides the deformation on both sides will be the same but the force that is felt by each of these two elements will be different what will be the force that will be felt at the dash part that is fa that is cx dot i can say cx1 dot but in this case x1 which is the deformation at the element 1 and the deformation at the element 2 is some x okay so i can say that the force that is felt at the dash part is cx dot and the force that is felt at the spring is some fb second element is some fb and that value is kx these are the two forces that will be felt x is the same x is the same okay so the total force that is felt by the whole system f is a function of the two forces f a and f b or i can say f1 plus f2 or something like that okay so let's uh, let's write this out
deformations x 1 felt by element 1 which is the dash part is equal to x 2 which is a deformation felt by the spring second element which is the spring the same as sum x okay, sum x. The forces forces f is the sum of the two individual forces f 1 plus f 2. We will call this instead of f a I am going to call this f 1 instead of f b I am going to call this sorry instead of uh, instead of f b I am going to call this f 2 ok because uh, here I am do here I am using x 1 x 2. So, it makes sense for me to use f 1 f 2 ok. What is f 1? f 1 is but d x 1 is d x ok that is c d x by d t or c x dot plus f 2 is k x. I can say k x 2, but then x 2 is x ok. This is actually c x 1 dot, but x 1 is x. So, that is essentially c x dot or c d x by d t. f 2 is k x 2, but then x 2 is x. So, that is k x ok. So, this is c d x by d t plus k x. So, what would be the initial condition for this uh, model? The deformation x of t at time t equal to 0 is 0 that is the deformation that is the initial condition. The deformation x of time t equal to 0 is equal to 0 the deformation is 0. And this is true for any f ok for any f why why is this the case because although the spring will immediately start to deform the dash part as a whole prevents any immediate deformation because dash part prevents instantaneous deformation ok. All right. This is the initial condition ok. Now, if I apply a force some force f of t is the theta of t as we discussed in the Maxwell model. What would be x of t for this f of t? What would be the response that would be that would be f naught by k times 1 minus e power minus k by c times t whole thing times theta of t right. That is if uh, c by k or if tau is equal to c by k this would become 1 minus e power minus t by tau right. The creep function this is the creep function for an applied force which is the heavy side step function. If you have a step increase in force or uh, stress the deformation or strain increases exponentially as in tau where tau is c by k because this is 1 minus e power minus t by tau it is not e power minus t by tau e power minus tau t by tau is a decreasing function this is 1 minus e power minus t by tau which is a 
which is an increasing function, right. So, that happens and that is along expected lines, right, because uh, that is what you would expect from a viscoelastic material, right, because uh, this is the creep behavior. So, with as time passes, the strain continues to increase for constant stress, that is creep, that is the uh, behavior that you would expect in a viscoelastic material and that depends on two things, right, that depends on that is actually not a simple function of only one of these factors that uh, depends on both C and K because tau is C by K. That depends on both the damping coefficient or the damping constant of the dashpot C and the spring constant K. Both of these will play a role in this. Now, suppose the application, suppose I am applying instead of a force, I am applying a deformation X of T. Suppose I am applying some x of t which is uh, uh, actually this force that is applied is theta of t times f naught is it not theta of t times f naught some initial force times likewise x naught times theta of t if I am applying right that is the response. And suppose I apply the response is f of t is is um, c x naught times delta of t plus k x naught times delta of t is it not. How do I know all these things? How do I get this? You know? From some basic analysis of differential equations, you know? I request you to please revise this, right? Because I know the initial conditions, I just have to substitute and redo some. Uh, so, if I understand this, then I can quickly write this as f of t is c x naught times delta of t, where what is delta of t? This is the direct delta function. So, what this means is that initially due to the dash part there is going to be a sudden increase in the force as in the direct delta function, but then that immediately settles down because as t increases t is greater than 0, t is greater than capital T by 2 for example, then the direct delta function does not exist anymore, the whole thing becomes 0 then you only have the response due to the spring which is k x naught times theta of t which is a step change in the spring, only the spring response remains. So, initially there will be a sudden increase in force and then that will decrease and then become the step function according to the applied deformation. This is the expected stress or force, okay. Of course, you can I request you to please check this by substitution, check this mathematics by substitution whether these uh, formulations are correct. They are correct, but please do check for your own understanding, okay. So, what are the predictions and what are the results uh, from the white model? In the creep experiments initially there is an exponential increase in creep as in 1 minus e power minus t by tau. Where do I know have this? That is this, is it not? 1 minus e power minus t by tau. Why is this happening? Due to the dash part, due to the dash part I am having this, you know, increase r a response in which the deformation is increased as time passes, okay. Where tau is C by K. Okay. Now, when the force is removed, what happens? This initial force is removed, then this uh, force decays as in E power minus T by tau. This is, this is also decaying, but this is a decreasing function because this is, this is 1 minus e power minus t, t by tau. By the way, by now we must be in a position to, to identify which is e power minus t by tau and which is 1 minus e power minus t by tau by just looking, right. 
because this is exponentially decaying. Compare this with the creep results of the Maxwell model and you will realize that there is a qualitative difference in creep between the Maxwell model and the white model. Right? There is a qualitative difference between the predictions of the Maxwell model and the white model. Okay. On the one hand, uh, the creep function prediction by 1 seems to be more accurate or more acceptable or more realistic than the other. So, it is it seems like both of these models are able to account for specific things, but are they the full story is something that we will have to wait and watch. Okay. So, this is the creep result. So, as I am increasing the force, the, the response the deformation increases as in 1 minus e power minus t beta and if I remove the force it decays as in e power minus t beta. Okay. If I perform a stress relaxation experiment, what happens? Stress relaxation experiment is if I apply a step change in deformation or strain, what happens to the force or stress that is the question. Well, if I apply a step change in strain, there will be a direct delta function in force, but that will last only a very brief period right? because direct delta function is going to last for a very small, very small amount of time which is capital T divided by 2, where capital T itself is a very small amount of time. So, it is a really small amount of time. So, at that time there is going to be a sudden increase in stress or force, a very large increase perhaps, an immediate and sudden but temporary and immediate abrupt sudden whatever sudden large increase but temporary change due to the direct delta function this is seen in the force this is due to the dash part alone as seen in the dash part alone and then as time passes very quickly very quickly the force settles down into the force that would be produced by the spring alone at this level. Once again this is also qualitatively different from the predictions of the Maxwell model is it not. Well, uh, one, one challenge with this model is what is the meaning physical meaning of this direct delta function uh, delta of t. Physically is this uh, realizable, this function is this realizable and extremely large amount of force in an extremely small amount of time is physically not realizable. So, this is a, a drawback or a challenge with uh, the white model, something to keep in mind that, uh, that this model gives out a response that requires a very large amount of force to be produced in an extremely small amount of time which is not physically realizable. Okay. So, there are both disadvantages or some, some limitations to these two models Maxwell model and white model. So, in this video we looked at another model of uh, viscoelasticity the white model and we discussed the creep function and the stress relaxation function using the white model. With this we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.